Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new review. Behind us is the new Toyota Corolla Cross. We're gonna check it in depth, exterior interior details from Booker's Auto Show. So if you wanna see more, subscribe, and without further ado, let's just jump into the review. So welcome to the first look of the new Corolla Cross and review. We're gonna check it out because I decided to film Toyotas on the channel for the regular audience uh, because they have finally new models. Now, beautiful Corolla Cross. Uh, there should be new Corolla coming as well, but this is the Cross, so it's giving us a little preview on what uh, the new Corolla will have. We're gonna check the details. Let's come closer, check these beautiful Datum running lights. They're LED, of course. You can see these plexiglass details. They look kind of like diamonds. It really looks fancy, I love that. Now these turn to turn signals and they're dynamic. Have the lens at the bottom. Have the fog lights down there as well. Uh, you can see the metallic finish. So this is some sort of uh, Bordeaux red. You can see here parking sensors for standard. We have also unpainted plastic with protection around the car. If you're going light off-roading. But the bottom part is painted, so it might get damaged. Might get some chips here. Or if it's a tall grass, might hit this. Uh, we have some contrasting gray, also metallic finish. And then like uh, a light gray metallic finish as well. And also interesting metallic finish, also like this gray tone on the grill itself. Now we have a little air intake at the bottom here, as you can see, it's closed on the top and air intake on the bottom below the license plate. Uh, blue badge, of course, this is where the radar is behind the badge. We have the one uh, 80 degrees fisheye lens camera on all four sides. We have 360 parking. I'm gonna demonstrate that inside. If I back up a little bit, you can see the whole car. It looks really elegant. And I love the new front headlights. They're a bit longer from the sides, but they look so cool. Have little flaps at the bottom there. Check the alloys. Gorgeous diamond cut, silver on gray finish. Now let's see if we can find the tire dimension. And it's a bit harder when you have tires shine. So these are 225.50 are 18 inch, 18 inch alloys. You can see that protection going underneath. So this is some sort of yeah, black color. Maybe on the light, it looks a bit grayish. Checking the top, you can see the speakers in the dash. You can see Lanus's camera light and brain sensor. It'll be for the incoming traffic, auto beam sensor. There are some heaters inside to defrost that area in the winter. Now we have a new side mirrors. They're not copied from the RAV. And you can see the camera there. Uh, I'm not sure if this is another center for the blind spot. That would be a logical conclusion. Now we have this roof racks. This is plasticky, so they're not aluminum. Also gray metallic finish. I love this color, it looks so good. And then we have a uh, black roof. It's not openable, it's tinted, but it gives you a little bit of light inside. Now if I back up here, you can see the whole car side profile. It looks like Mini Rav and Corolla had a baby. So, yeah. Now, driver's side, you can press to lock or unlock. Driver's side has Physical cylinder and we have a little chrome on the top. I'm gonna come back to the spec later. We have here tinted windows and we have here Corolla Cross in the finishing chrome detail. Uh, this is a lock from the inside, we're gonna come back to that. Another look at the tires. We have a little fender sticked out here for regulations. And then we have this beautiful new. LED taillights. Uh, I love this 
design, we still have valves for the reverse and turn signals, reverse lights and turn signals. But it looks pretty solid. We come back here. I like the rear signature. It says Toyota. Now you can see plastic fender. This back end has plastic underneath. So you can see exhaust pipe on the right and parking sensors integrated so you don't have to paint them. It's way cheaper in that case. Blue badge for the hybrid. You can see white license plates, uh, illumination and backing camera. I'm gonna pop this open. There's a little nozzle there for the wiper. Uh, stop light is not on the top, it's integrated in the glass. Electronic opening. Let's back up so you can see the perspective. Now I'm a two meter tall person of 6.6. .6. So it doesn't open too tall. So watch not to hit your head if you're a taller person. You can close or lock it. You can adjust it manually, if necessary, the height. Look at this detail, curl across. It's plain on the top. Now, this is the cargo. We open the roller, you can see that. Now the seats knock down 60-40. You can see that you can tilt the seat this is an upright position. Now on the right, it's pretty plain. There is a grocery hook here, max two kilograms. There's a little tray here, rubberized. You have four tether points. And on the left, you have the JBL speaker. Another grocery hook and a cold light. Now, there is three fingers of height to the bottom. You can open this up. You can see you get a spare wheel. That's a nice detail. So you can change your tire if you get a puncture. There's some side space here. You can maybe put an emergency triangle. And it's a quite decent cargo volume. Now you can of course retract this and remove the cover if you want to use the top space. There we go. It's kind of soft closing and that's it's not too loud. Looks pretty masculine. Also, some nice details in the lights. Let's come to this end. Solid opening and closing sound. Door handles are not too clunky. Doors open fairly wide. Have good double ceiling. You can push this down to lock from the inside for the kids. So they don't open from the inside. Have hard plastic on the rear. Big handles, practical. This is leather and it's padded. Hard plastic is rest. Sturdy, you have a nice cup holder here. Power windows and a speaker at the bottom. And the good thing is the doors go all the way down. So when you're washing the car, there won't be water staying here. Now look at the interior you can see this tilted seat and the upright seat if you open up here you can see how that looks when it's knocked down now there's definitely not a flat if you want to put some cargo there's a seat belt aligner there so it's not in the way so you can see you can do that now there are isofix points. You have to remove a little plastic there, so watch out not to lose it. Maybe store it in the rear. There's a little 
air vents. So this is usually when you close the doors, the pressure from the air needs to travel somewhere. So it goes outside. Sometimes it's for cooling the batteries and so on. If it's a hybrid. And over here you can see leather seats, perforated the bottom and the top in this area. You can see the whole LED light on the rear. Let's jump inside. Now this is sufficient space. I was sitting in the front. I hope nobody moved my seat for me while I was reviewing. Um, a little bit tight, but you can fit a tall person. But if a shorter person was sitting in the front, then you'd have more knee space. Consider that. And while we have more light, you can see AC in the rear. I think that's a must in cars. And there is... Oh. Two USB-Cs. That was a tough spot to film. And we have a transmission tunnel. It's a bit wider. It's not straight, it's like a V towards myself. But it's not too tall, so it shouldn't be a problem. To squeeze a third person, this is soft and comfy. The seats are wide. You can go inside a bit. And over here, you can extend a armrest cup holders. This is rubberized. Soft, comfy. <coughs> And you can see nice and tall windows. Have one in the C pillar. Good overview in the rear. You can see electronic shade. There are handles slowly closing and with hooks on the back. So all four sides have handles. Let's hear the closing sound. Solid closing sound. Uh, front is open, so the windows are down on the front. And from view from the back. Uh, looks nice. We have new big screen, new digital cockpit, and you can see the panel roof. Not openable, but it gives you a lot of light. Now, headroom. If I straighten up my back, I want to straighten up my head. Uh, I'm hitting the roof, and because of the roof, I can straighten up. Maybe if there wasn't any roof here, I mean, if it wasn't optioned. Uh, I would have more uh, headspace. So if I was an average person, I would be maybe touching or just barely touching. So it would be in okay in that case. Let's get on the front. You can adjust the seat belt height. So for some people it's important detail. Of course you can adjust the headrest front and rear. good opening and closing sound considering the window is all the way down just a little detail you have a blind spot warning uh, you don't have auto dimming for the mirrors but they're nice and big and they're moving from the side for better aerodynamics front doors open very wide for Corolla better than the rear now this is softly padded nice materials stitching there big handles nice and practical again same as on the rear for the bottom part this is nice and sturdy automatic windows but excuse me electronic windows but only the driver's side is automatic and that's something that's stupid saving in my opinion so Toyota should really add all automatic windows like other car manufacturers <laughs> you can lock the rear for the kids when the ignition is on lock or unlock from the inside bit small buttons though you can adjust the mirrors and uh, fold them electronically speaker on the bottom a little bit uh, really small you can put maybe smaller bottles here in this area hard plastics on the bottom you can see the tire pressure here and the tire dimension so you can have 18 inch or 17 inch uh, this sound is only for the lights because I turn on the lights. Now we have the electronic seats back and forward, up and down for the knee area. Full seat, tilt, and we have lumbar. 
really important if you're a tall person. Uh, well designed seats, not too big bolsters at the bottom, but bigger on the top. Classical Toyota and again leather with peripheral parts. Uh, it's a nice and comfy, comfy com it's a nice and comfortable space. You can see that just we can see the top. Uh, we're gonna pop the bonnet later. It's blank. You can open or close from the driver position. There is light height you can control that automatic a long beam uh, view for the cameras and self parking in this case is probably an option steering column is a manual let's hop inside before we do that corolla hybrid so they didn't make the corolla cross hybrid carpets i guess they didn't have time maybe for that so it's another just a little detail Let's hear the closing sound. So a good closing sound once again, considering that the windows are down. So to focus on the digital virtual cockpit, whatever you call it. Now decent graphics from the eye distance when you come a little bit closer, it's sharp enough and that's not what I wanted to turn on uh, of course you can control here radio settings or skip songs um, now over here you can see views the little dial here you can see the navigation you can see like a classical dials a little infos and the map so this is cars running, so it's idling to charge the battery. Moving to the new infotainment, uh, wow, this is such an upgrade. I wish uh, the Yaris Cross got this infotainment, it has the old generation, so Corolla Cross has the new infotainment. Um, we also saw this in the BZ4X uh, EV from Toyota. Now this looks amazing, you have Google Maps, uh, this is responsive uh, and the graphic user interface is more uh, better looking, more intuitive. It's really simple graphics though. I think they could have maybe worked this out a little bit better. But again, it's a refresh definitely after coming from the old infotainment. Uh, this is going to be uh, mostly appreciated. Uh, now you can have here uh, dark theme or night theme I think uh, this is more suitable for the interior of the car which is dark of course you can have it on automatic you see here camera contrast uh, if you go to the reverse now we are in you see the camera here uh, not the sharpest camera resolution but the screen resolution is nice you have 360 view and you can see all of that. Now, over here you can see the map at night. So it's pretty responsive, look at this. It has a nice fast processor inside. If you go here, you can see a bunch of its interests, uh, traffic, motorways, route, trace. And uh, it doesn't seem like it has a satellite view, but it's still better than previously. Uh, of course, you can turn off the display here or mute the audio. Uh, you can change the volume here. There's no signal. Let's see if we can switch radio stations. Now, let me see here. Oops, station lists. Uh, see the source see the FM. now we are in Romania can't play for too long not to get a copyright strike speakers uh, are JBL uh, but the windows are down so uh, you can hear the audio as much but I what I've heard a little it has a good bass so sounds good uh, I would always upgrade the speakers if it's an option 
Uh, you can see the AC controls when they're on, automatic AC, off, front, rear, fast, uh, eco, soft and fan speed, air direction, uh, closed or open, air circulation, AC on, you can sync for the you know, passenger. It's in high because it's charging the battery. There's your power button and you have the heated steering wheel, uh, low, high, heating for the seats. USB A, there's a light illumination here and you can see you can charge your phone. And over here you can see driving modes, traction off EV mode, if you press EV mode, it gives you a little EV mode on the side there. And then if you go to driving modes, you can see the power, eco, normal, or that's it. You can see that. Okay, I'll black there and you can see the buttons for your parking brake and auto hold. But that's it, we're gonna turn off the engine, but you can see also here the illumination of the buttons. So uh, they've turned on the engine for us because they want the batteries to be charged so we don't deplete the 12-volt battery. Uh, I'm gonna show the interior a little bit detailed. So you saw the cockpit and the new infotainment. Now going to the steering wheel. Has nice texture to it, but it's more on the smooth side. Round steering wheel, no flat bottom. <clears throat> so this is the steering wheel we saw in the RAV and the newer models, so it's not new anymore, but it's elegant. Uh, no piano black. I like the fact that the car has just a little bit of piano black. It's mostly carable at the automatic part, um, but the steering wheel is free of piano black. Uh, phone calls, return button uh, for the screen options, volume, voice commands, a radio, our Bluetooth, skip, and here cruise control, lane, and a distance, cruise on, and so on. Uh, this is hard, hard hard so they didn't add any soft touch materials but again some people never touch that so it's not that bad uh, air vents are quite cool the design have an air vent going to the side there a little window there JBL speaker there and there that I showed you from the outside you can see that so it does look a little bit plasticky I mean we're used in Corolla to get leather. Now this is covered by real leather. It's slightly padded, but not too much. So this doesn't sound too cheap, but at the bottom and top, it's hard plastic. I think car industry one day are saving it. I think this is a solid compromise, but of course it would feel a lot better if there was actually soft touch materials on the top. But then again, people don't really care as much for that at least some don't now a uh, big screen it's taller and i like the fact that the top of the screen is close to the edge of the windshield so it is uh, better so your eyes are closer to the road air vents below and i like the fact that we have physical dials that i showed you and uh, ac controls you can see the hazards here unfortunately you can't see them through the mirrors uh, moving down, I showed you the heated steering wheel, heated seats, USB, wireless charging. I saw the buttons, uh, CVD automatic, not the favorite automatic, but it is what it is. Uh, parking brake and auto hold, I showed you. So there is a little bit piano black down here. Um, yeah, we've talked many times about the piano black not being favorite. There's something the car industry should get rid of cup holders they're not adjustable plastic key this is nice and soft small armrest you're gonna be fighting for the passenger for the passenger for the elbow space uh, fill volt 120 watts so it has a nice spring here closes automatically and there's a little carpet down there so this is how it looks if you remove it and and this is the opening mechanism uh, seats really comfy 
think these are in a rub, if I'm not mistaken. And to open up here, you can see here plastic plain but a very spacious glove compartment. Now on the front, plenty of headroom despite the banner roof, but usually that's the case on the front. For tall people, there's always enough headroom. Uh, on the rear, it might be a problem. Uh, you saw the uh, mirror, it's a good overview on the rear. And you can see it now when it's uh, actually open. Someone's browsing the rear. And you can see a little uh, film here, maybe the gray part. Auto dimming is an option. It looks, yeah, they have a little on and off button there. Uh, you have a little light there. There is here a light. I think this is for the doors. So you can just turn on this end, or you can have them all on. Uh, you can see I'm gonna cut in opening of the shade. You can close the shade. So this is how it looks, it's more darker, and you can open it, you just press once it closes or opens all the way, or you can just control how far you want it to be open. And there's a little blank here, and over here there is a emergency call button. So it has a little cover so kids don't accidentally press that. And you have here airbag information, and uh, it looks like probably seatbelt information black roof liner so I'm gonna check the package this might be like the sport package usually that's the case when you have black roof liner uh, we have a cold light so it's consistent with the lights the interior and the cargo that's quite nice privacy mirror uh, no documents holder this is plastic key it's not soft and let's check if it extends so this area is not covered and nope it does not extend I think the car industry should add that uh, very few cars have that and you have a little mic here for your you know um, calls in the car now if you're a taller person you're gonna see the hood and you have nice big side mirrors good overview on the rear and I think we should get on the front and show you what's powering the car and then check the spec sheet. Let's pop the bonnet for once. Now in Toyota it's usually a bit, I think to the left, actually no, to the right, but then push to the left. You have to use the leg on the top. There's a sound insulation and you can see the petrol engine. I believe this is probably petrol. Yeah, Toyota got rid of the diesels. So petrol four cylinder, there's no cover. Uh, washer fluid is this, it's marked uh, colored black. Usually it is blue, but some car manufacturers decided to have that in black. Now, I love the metallic color finish. Let it drop, and it closes perfectly. So, beautiful design. Now, I wanted to turn on the hazards for you. Okay, let's start from the rear. You can see those. Plastic bolts. But check the front. Dynamic. Now that looks quite nice. Let me just show you the... Let's turn the lights all the way on. So you can see the lens. And let's show you the data running. Like you can also see the side mirrors. This looks way better. It's pretty cool. Let's check the specs. So we have a Corolla Cross Hybrid, four-wheel drive, 
name of the package is exclusive. So price is in Romania, 41,500 euros. We have petrol engine, 197 horsepower, which is not bad. And uh, cargo space is 384 liters. We have the automatic ECVT transmission and that's the spec sheet. So everyone, if you like the video, smash the like button, share this Corolla forums, Toyota forums, and uh, someone who might be interested in the car. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye.